from uh, elsewhere. Then go on to the next slide, uh, Christine. Um, but we are, of course, also um, encountering some challenges, particularly that we are learning on the go. Uh, many of us are jumping on the riding train. And uh, we also, given the magnitude of the COVID crisis, we also really want to have fast results to have meaningful impact. And finally, that sometimes being connected across uh, so many countries, we experience challenges of connect connectivity and uh, communication. Um, however, then going to the last uh, slide, um, so far we have been able to uh, move uh, forward and therefore it really is a great pleasure to uh, present uh, to you today, today's uh, program. And so today um, the focus is on the introduction of all the teams and uh, to see what the priorities are in different locations and uh, to understand how Vodan can be useful in this context. And so um, having um, uh, opened with that as a, as a kind of a, um, attempt to uh, set out the objectives of the webinar uh, today and to welcome all of you from so many different countries. I've just been uh, looking at the list of uh, participants. It's so impressive uh, and wonderful to uh, have so many of you here. So thank you for taking the time. Um, I would like to, uh, first of all, take this opportunity to uh, welcome the VC of Kampala International University. Uh, this is um, Professor Mpesa. Uh, and um, to thank him for the leadership that he has given. I'm trying to see, Francesca, is um, Professor Pesa there? Uh, not yet, he's gonna join he us. No, he is, he is, he is he's oh. on board. Ah, he's there, he is on board. <laughs> <laughs> you were just a silent observer there, VC. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, Thank it's you, my... Francesca <laughs> Uh, it is uh, my uh, my honor and, uh, and and pleasure, of course, to uh, to welcome you. You have very uh, generously uh, taken the, the helm of uh, this uh, effort and <laughs> make you. and made sure that uh, Kampala International University was uh, providing everything possible to make sure that uh, that this initiative could uh, be taken off the ground. So. Um, it's a pleasure to give you the floor for your opening remarks, Professor. Uh, thank, thank you so much, uh, Professor Miriam. Uh, greetings from Uganda. I know we are from different parts of the world. I can see some of our senior colleagues. Professor Some, welcome, and, uh, and others. Yes, uh, Francisca, we thank you for coordinating. First of all, let me appreciate uh, the efforts of everybody. Kampala International University uh, is uh, chairing the implementation network. We all understand the value of uh, what uh, is going on now. The efforts that we are making individually and as the team, the entire network that has been established with uh, assistance from different partners uh, in the Netherlands and in Africa and uh, elsewhere, uh, as we can see. We, we in Uganda are really happy that uh, from this part of the world, uh, plus our Tunisian counterparts and uh, those within the East African region, the Horn of Africa, Ethiopia, places, uh, we are so, so happy. Number two, uh, what we are planning to do now and what we are doing currently seems to be just um, a, a network that is going to, uh, first of all, in the short term, serve for the first six months. But we do understand the importance of uh, FAIR or Go Fair Foundation, to which we are all really appreciative. Uh, Professor Somi, Professor Miriam, and uh, colleagues from Kampala International University University of Leiden and a few other universities. You remember uh, in 2019, uh, our very historic uh, trip uh, to the Netherlands that led us to meet 
it's great people, great minds of the Philip Foundation, uh, from which now we can see their great efforts. Thirdly, it's about building capacity and uh, enhancing uh, uh, use of uh, FAIR uh, and data access. You know, we are training the uh, data stewards and people who will be able to help us. And I really appreciate the webinars that are going on. I've attended one of them already. And I think they are very, very, very technical, but very useful because the times are tough. And so we require the technical ability. The critical underlying point in uh, this whole affair is the fact that uh, in the less resourced environments, like we know in Africa and other parts of the world, uh, the use of uh, fair data is really, really going to add a lot of value. We know that they are all uh, data rights that are going to be observed. And I would like to say that um, we are happy uh, that this effort is taking place under uh, the leadership of Kampala International University. And this is really not an advert, but uh, it's just to announce that the efforts of Professor Francisca and her team and also Mariam, I hope Mariam is, uh, is also listening, Basaja, our, our, our the PhD student uh, who has done quite a lot. And I don't want to list because I know that the time is uh, gazetted, but uh, on behalf of the Board of Trustees that uh, has uh, provided a, a big blessing uh, and also the University Council of Kampala International University, our technical teams, and also Professor Miriam, uh, who has actually been at it. And uh, this, 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 is a, this is a big, I can call it a huge fruit. In Africa, we have the jackfruit. So this is a very big jackfruit uh, out of the efforts of uh, everybody else. And uh, I really wish this forum this evening a great success. We will always be there. Uh, please do not uh, feel embarrassed to raise any issues if we are not delivering on uh, as planned. And I hope that we all learn from this experience so that we can actually deal with the future pandemics. We are setting up a system that is going to go beyond the six months of the project. We hope that we can roll out uh, different other strategies that will lead us into ensuring the health and safety of our people and also the control of uh, spread of diseases, but by using, by fair use of data, and also ensuring that uh, access is given uh, and the sources of the data are protected without really uh, theft of any form. And I thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, let's hope for a very successful meeting this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you, VC. Thank you, Dr. Mpeza, for those uh, encouraging uh, words as we are looking uh, to developing this uh, further and hearing uh, today how uh, all of us are doing our level best in each of our different places. But before we do so, um, I thought that it was um, going to be right to also um, learn from the past. And one of my um, very close uh, uh, and honored friends is uh, Her Excellency Julia Duncan Casal, who was um, the special envoy and really um, uh, taking so much of the brunt uh, five years uh, ago when uh, Liberia is one of the three countries in West Africa was uh, fighting the Ebola crisis. And um, it's, a, it's a great uh, honor that uh, the former minister has uh, joined uh, Vodan and I would really like to welcome her and to uh, offer her the floor to give her some of her insights and also to um, uh, explain to us why she thought it was uh, important uh, to join uh, Vodan and what lessons can be learned from the crisis then that uh, at this point we should uh, uh, really count on uh, dealing with as we develop this initiative. Um, Excellency, are you on the... Maybe if uh, there might be some problem with the... Uh, 
connectivity or the time. So, Christine, I uh, propose that maybe you will um, remind me that at the end of the um, uh, session, we shall uh, again give uh, the minister the floor if she'll be there. Yes, of course. That sounds great. All right. Thanks, Christine. So, um, then um, at this point, uh, it is my great pleasure to uh, give the floor to uh, Francesca. Francesca, who is the coordinator of uh, Vodan Africa. All of you know her. I don't think there can be anybody here on this call who doesn't know uh, Francesca and who has worked uh, from the lockdown, from all of the challenges that were there, so hard to bring all of us uh, together and to make sure that really the training uh, uh, could go ahead, that all of the partners were there lined up to uh, support all of that. And um, I think from everybody here on the call, Francesca, we really, really thank you for those efforts. And uh, please, um, Welcome to the webinar and the floor is yours for your introductory remarks. Thank you, Professor Mira. Uh, Christine, can you just go to the next slide? I have just one slide and uh, welcome everyone and thank you all for your support for Bodan Africa. I'm trying to adjust my view, okay. For your support for Bodan Africa, I'm just going to be talking about giving a brief overview of how far we have come within just this a little oh, a month now, right? Professor Miriam, we started in April. So the core team, we have uh, Professor Miriam who is leading us and then that's me, Miriam Basaja is the technical coordinator and we have uh, Frederick of Wanda as the program manager, the projects manager, and this team, they have worked around the clock. Sometimes we exchange like messages to very late in the night. We have meetings several times in a week and I'm really grateful to them. They have been steering the ship of this project. We also have the country cohorts led by the country coordinators. You're gonna be listening to them speak uh, after me and then the data stewards who have been so incredible. Many of the data stewards are actually graduate students and now they're out of school, no allowances, but from their own resources, they have tried to be part of the project to learn support. We have our training sometimes in a week. We have up to two webinars and they're always there. And you kind of see the enthusiasm in them because the Modern Africa project is actually bringing uh, African expertise into the fight against COVID-19 with the support of our partners from Europe, which I'm going to be introducing to you. And we have this incredible team of TOT support, like the Professor Miriam's graduate students, and you actually will not believe the level of support they have given to the project. We have a, <laughs> we, we kind of stress them beyond, beyond what they're required to do, but they're always there for us. And we have the institutional support group, we have received endorsement from Ministry of Health from Uganda, and then we have the health regulatory agencies from also from Uganda and Ethiopia, and more are still coming. The Vice Chancellor of KIU, every time we're talking about KIU, is always asking about Bodan Africa, how is it going, what is happening, he's always so interested, and he's been an incredible chair of the project. And the Pro Vice Chancellor from the Great Zimbabwe University has also offered a Tremendous support to the project. We have partners from other universities in Africa. Professor Osome is here. He has offered so his time and energy and connections just to help us succeed. Thank you. And just recently, Your Excellency, the Honorable Julian Duncan Castle just volunteered to help us, to help us to learn from the Ebola crisis. She was so active during that time. And now bringing those experiences, she has now understood why data is very, very important, and not just data, but verified data. We have partnerships. I'm sorry about, our, I don't know how this happened. Uh, Ivy and uh, Christine, I hope we'll be able to tidy up this third uh, panel so that when we're distributing this slide, it will be this way. But we have partnership from Europe. The Philips Foundation is actually sponsoring this project. And then we have had technical support from the GoFair Foundation 
and our own indigenous company, Rabble Works, all the way from Kenya, has been so tremendous in handling all the webinars since they joined us. And uh, we're happy that very soon, most of the technical aspects of this work will be happening in Africa. We have received support from universities in Africa, KIU from Uganda. We have Grace Zimbabwe University from Kenya. We have the Tangaza and Moi. And from Ethiopia, we have uh, the university in Addis Ababa and the Mekele University. Mekele has actually gone to their website to announce the partnership with Bodan. And in Nigeria, we have the Olampisi Onombanjo University. And then in uh, Tunisia, we have the University de Sousse in Tunisia. And of course, in Europe, we have experienced and enjoyed, though not formal, but informal support from uh, the leading university, like we're using their graduate students as if we actually enroll them in school. And then, of course, Professor Miriam students from Tilburg as well, they have all been of tremendous support. And of course, we have the IPA. IPA has taken over like the administration of this project as well, and we're grateful to them. So looking into the future, we're looking beyond COVID-19. Yes, there's a virus outbreak. It's eventually uh, going to be defeated, hopefully with all the efforts being put into place. So then we have submitted a proposal to WHO, for example, to extend this to primary health care, which is the essential uh, foundation for all health care in the country. There are more country partnerships coming in, Liberia, South Africa, Rwanda, and so many people due to the pedigree of Professor Miram and then Dr. Mpeza, many people are actually expressing support without us really reaching out, wanting to join us. And then we're looking forward to technical manpower development and transfer to Africa so that most of things that we had to outsource to companies outside of Africa can actually be done here by our data stewards and by our technical partners. So I'd like to thank you, Professor Miram, for the incredible leadership and to every member of this team, the data stewards, we've had to Thank you so much. To Christine, Christine, yes, we don't enjoy a formal partnership with the San Diego, yes, but they have given us a platform to host, like how many webinars now? We had like this about the fifth one or thereabouts, and we still have two more coming. And I know if we call on Christine tomorrow and say we need more hosting of webinars, she wouldn't say no. So thank you very much. For Kampala International University, I can see the Chief University Librarian is here, Dr. Friska. Uh, I have seen uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research Innovation Consultants and Extension, Professor DG is here with us. Uh, the Deputy Director of Quality Assurance, Mr. Solomon Matovu is also here. I'm sorry if I'm not able to call everyone. From Nigeria, from Computer Science Department, Federal University, Lokoja. I have Taiwo, Loko, uh, Taiwo Kolajo is here, John Abari is here, and several, several other people. Thank you all for your support and partnership. Thank you. Thank you thank so much, you. Francesca. Oh, go ahead, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> no, Christine, thanks. Um, thank you, Francesca. That was a brilliant, brilliant overview. Uh, and I think you're the only one who could uh, give that. Thanks uh, a lot. And I see that um, uh, the Honorable Minister, Julia Cassella, has joined us. Welcome, Honorable Minister. Uh, Julia, this is um, such a great pleasure to have you here with us. I had already announced to you and uh, explained that in Vodan, we really feel that we need to uh, learn from uh, uh, what uh, could be done uh, better, what lessons are there to learn from the past. And um, I had explained that you were taking a huge responsibility as special envoy of uh, President Sirleaf at the time in 2014 and 2015 when you were beating the uh, crisis that uh, Ebola was um, uh, putting and uh, such a strain on your countries. It's a great honor that you have joined uh, Vodan and I would like to give you the floor so that you can share with, uh, with us uh, some of your uh, experiences. And perhaps you can check and see if your mute button is off. Julia? Ivy, can you check if you can unmute her by yourself? Can I, uh, shall I mute? Or can I? Uh, 
Oh, okay. Our audio is not on yet. I think Shivas Shivas is on. I think she's going in and uh, out. Let me see. Mm -hmm. She's writing yes, something I can see here. here now, but ah, she says I'm on, but can't hear you. So, um, shall we ask her to go in and out again? Okay. Yes, and these are the things that uh, always come up with a webinar, but uh, it is such a wonderful opportunity to all be together. This is something that uh, we might not have attempted in normal times to try and span all of these time zones and countries. And so uh, if you'll just give us a, a moment of, of patience uh, while we try and have Her Excellency sign on, that would be very appreciated. And I really uh, appreciate all of the introductions given so far. I think for me, um, you know, aside for just uh, as, as one people wanting to beat uh, COVID-19 and have uh, the world return to, you know, the best version of what it was before, I think Africa is really posed to, poised to uh, leapfrog in technology. This is a concept we have uh, from information technology where the first people to deploy systems aren't necessarily the ones that have the best systems in place a decade or more later. Those that follow on and have the newer systems and have learned from everything that has already been implemented can really jump ahead. And so this is what we are seeing with Africa being poised to lead the way really in data stewardship and the deployment of these fair data points and to really show the rest of the world how this can be done um, in other places where they are still so tied to the legacy ways of doing things. Thank you, Christine. Um, Julia is saying that uh, she is uh, in, as I could see, she's in the, in the webinar. Um, I just don't know if uh, she is able to unmute. Otherwise, uh, we will. Uh, I think she needs to check her computer audio. Yeah. Yes, I'm on now. Can you hear me? Ah, yes. I can hear you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> there you go. Please, the floor is yours. Julia Duncan Cassell. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mara, and to all on, on the platform. It's good to be a part of this um, unique group. And I think at this point, time it is very very important especially for our continents and i think the rest of the world can learn from africa so just happy to be a part and to learn to learn in whatever um, expertise or, or concerns that uh, this platform and need from us thank you thank you honorable minister then um uh, we will now uh, proceed to um, the um, presentation of all the platforms that have been uh, part of the um, vote down uh, Africa setup. And uh, so um, I'd like to announce the first uh, country, uh, which is um, Nigeria. I think it's Professor Sakinat, if I'm right. Prof, are you there? Yes. Professor yes. Sakinat. Um, yeah, Dr. Sakinat, I'm right here. Thank uh, you, Professor Major. Yes. I am particularly excited to be here. I. Please I'll go ahead, to, Prof. Yes. I am particularly happy to be here. And um, I want to thank you, Prof, for bringing me in here as Nigeria coordinator. And also the Vice Chancellor of KIU. Thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful presentation. And also to the to our Excellency, the Minister, and uh, Professor Francisca. Thank you so much. Go fair, Bodan, Nigeria, everybody. Thank you so much. Next slide, Christine. Yeah, Nigeria. Um, we joined Bodan some month, uh, maybe about a month ago. Uh, through me and uh, Data Science Nigeria, which is the largest uh, data science community in Nigeria, and um, that Nigeria is is a is in the west of Africa, and we are bordered with so many other countries. And um, 
we have 36 states with um, one federal capital territory, and um, we have six regions, like the Southwest, the Southwest, and uh, some other regions. Next slide, please. Yeah, so the country context is that um, concerning the COVID on the general is that we have the National Center for Disease Control that is solely in charge of COVID. And uh, I think what they have tried to do is that uh, they try to put on the statistical information of COVID-19 results and, um, and it's publicly available for everybody to see. And uh, the number of patients they, 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 they check for COVID and the ones they treat and uh, the ones they di that die eventually. Uh, for the Ministry of Health, we have them at the federal level and also at the state level. So what the federal ministry did was that um, they were largely dependent on the state ministries and they also have what they call the state officers that are in charge. So the detection of COVID is actually managed by this uh, state representative and they give information directly to the federal ministry. And uh, we also have um, some designated hospitals that, um, that are in charge of the treatment or maybe taking care of uh, the patients with COVID. So what they normally did was that um, the, 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 those designated ho hospitals, they don't actually test for COVID, but they put patients there for probably treatment and for monitoring. And the, most of the data they do is still on pencil. They only give the statistics of this information to um, NCDC that they publish online for everybody to see. Next slide, please. Christine. Okay, so some of our highlights are that um, the NCDC, they, they, they take charge of the COVID-19 disease, the results and the management, and um, we see the statistical results online. Now, the, what, what we, myself and my group, what we are trying to do now is um, now how do we collaborate with um, NCDC or probably the Ministry of Health to make our, uh, our data fair and make this a reality? Then how do we create a metadata? Though we are still undergoing the training, but we are seeing how um, on how do we create this metadata? But the, the, the main highlight is how do we connect with NCDC? That's what we are trying to unravel now. The next slide, please. So some of the challenges that we have or we are facing now is that how to get data. What kind of data are we really looking for? Is it for the, 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 the virus data or um, the, the, the hospital data for COVID patients or the treatment or, or the post-treatment of COVID. Then the questionnaire, we still have them and uh, we still have slight problem in filling that questionnaire. Then another challenge is how do we now form FDP and uh, metadata creation then. And there's this lockdown that there is no movement, we make movement practically almost impossible in moving around. So, and we don't know when they will remove the lockdown, but uh, some people that we can get in touch with on phone, we do it. But sometimes it is always better when we go physically. Next slide, please. So, some of the lessons that we have learned so far is taking up challenges and uh, we are going to get you to it. Then I am particularly happy to be working with awesome people because if not for this COVID, how will I meet Professor Mijam? How will I be opportunity to see the Vice Chancellor of KIU and know so much about Gofia and Vodan? Then the training on metadata is still going on and uh, we are taking notes and myself and my group, we are trying to bring it down to Nigerian context. Soon, we will pass on our working documents to Professor Mijam 
to see how far we have gone. And also, we are trying to incorporate actively the nine components of the metadata that uh, Eric taught us recently. So the lessons that we have learned so far is we want to, we are bringing home what we have learned so far to Nigerian context. Next slide. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank Bye. you, Professor. Thank you, Professor Sakina. That was brilliant and, uh, and very, very interesting. And thank you for highlighting the brilliant work that you are doing together with uh, data science. And uh, we look forward to hearing a lot more from you as we uh, proceed uh, in the future. So um, I think, uh, Christine, is it right that we'll be taking questions uh, at the end of the, um, uh, when everybody has presented from the different countries? Yes, yeah, since unless there's a very burning question that someone wants to put into the chat, we will let the, um, the other four country spotlights go, which should take 10 minutes or less each. And then um, as people would like, we can um, have questions or discussions. Um, we had scheduled about 90 minutes for this session. Um, and so hopefully that, that works for people. But um, this way people can get the country spotlights if they need to drop off a bit earlier. Thanks, Christine. And um, I think we have been doing very well on time. Thank you, everybody, for being so, uh, so disciplined, actually. So um, now it's my pleasure, my great pleasure, to um, uh, present to you my very own uh, Mariam Basaja. People always make fun of us, Miriam and Mariam, because Mariam is my PhD student. Uh, I think she has been, she's the one who has been working on FAIR the longest. She started her uh, internship uh, two years ago at the Go Fair uh, Foundation and she is leading the Uganda team. Mariam, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so very much, Mariam. Thank you so much. Uh, greetings, everyone. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Francisca. Uh, for you know bringing all of us together and then I'd like to thank the VC for being present uh, Professor Surenderana, um, the minister and everyone that's on the webinar today thank you for joining us uh, you are all most welcome uh, so uh, Kristen next slide please uh, so basically um, I'll take you through the introduction first. Um, Uganda is first and foremost located in the eastern part of Africa um, with a population of about uh, 45 million people. And um, Uganda has 56 districts uh, to be specific. Um, so on the 17th of March uh, 2020, a press release was uh, made indicating that uh, the GoFair uh, Kampala International University, which is a leading private university uh, in Uganda with a very large medical campus and a university hospital, uh, together with uh, Philips Foundation teamed up to fight and contain the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, the effort was launched as part of the modern GoFair implementation network, uh, which addresses the current and uh, immediate challenges to use and connect digital health data worldwide uh, and also follow the outbreak. Uh, so uh, we obtained, uh, well, like Professor Francisca said, uh, we obtained the modern endorsement uh, from Dr. Atwine, uh, who is the Permanent Secretary, uh, Ministry of Health Uganda on the 27th of March. And we also obtained the ethical approval and um, we then uh, launched uh, the project. And so thereafter, we've had very many more partners join us and um, actively participate in the project. Uh, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tunisia, and we have so many others joining us. Um, next slide. 
So um, context-wise, uh, reporting in most of the hospitals in Uganda is still paper-based. Um, medical records are usually stored in uh, shelves and um, there's a tremendous increase in unconnected data health data, patient data, uh, research data and the published articles. So uh, with the COVID-19 virus currently according to the World Dometer information. Uh, there's about uh, 98 reported cases of the coronavirus in Uganda. Uh, there's been no deaths so far. And then about 55 people have uh, recovered. Um, next slide. So uh, during this project, uh, we faced a number of challenges. Um, first and foremost, due to the current lockdown in Uganda, the data stewards face the issue of uh, limited internet access. Uh, they cannot use the facilities of the university, uh, which has been uh, an issue and has kind of slowed down the process. But um, And then there's been... Um, a challenge with the inadequate technological expertise, um, lack of computer equipment, um, unreliable electricity in some areas. Uh, as we all know, in Uganda, some areas usually get uh, electricity shortages, and then sometimes, you know, you have to like really be in the dark for the whole night. Um, next slide. So, uh, with my highlights, uh, currently there's uh, ongoing discussions to facilitate the data stewards internet access and electricity. And then also we have a team of more experienced technical personnel um, who have availed themselves to assist the data stewards in case of any queries that may arise. And as part of that initiative, uh, we established the Slack group, WhatsApp groups. So all the data stewards should always, you know, feel free to ask anything. Um, yeah, next slide. So the lessons learned, um, I believe the data stewards are now more conversant with, um, uh, with the fair principles and uh, fair data point installation and the metadata for machines. And, uh, well, and well, they've clearly been demonstrating a better understanding. Uh, and then, uh, I've also realized the relevance uh, of cooperation and pra uh, partnerships. Before us, kind of uh, this person that um, kind of used to feel like I could do everything on my own and, you know, I can achieve so much on my own by myself, but um, with uh, cooperation and uh, the current partnerships that we've had, I believe we've achieved so much more than we could have achieved if the project was done by a single person or as one person. So um, that's all I have to say for now. And um, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Mariam. That was a very good presentation. Thank you. And um, at this point, I think I should also thank uh, those uh, colleagues of ours. I see that uh, Putu is there um, and Kukri is there. I don't know if um, uh, Alia is also there. We've been doing so much from uh, our department to uh, help us uh, along. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, all the support that you provide, um, uh, whether it's late in the night or early in the morning, you are there. So, um, Mariam, thank you for the overview from uh, Uganda. And uh, then I could uh, now um, 
present uh, our friends from uh, Ethiopia. Um, first of all, Getu Tadala, who is from the University of Mekele, which uh, is located in uh, northern uh, Ethiopia. And uh, he is joined by his colleague from uh, Addis Ababa University, from the capital, uh, Bondimo, who will uh, also uh, speak about the, um, they will both speak about the two fair data points that they will be uh, working on as part of this uh, project. First of all, uh, Getu, um, can I uh, invite you to take the floor? Yes, Professor. Thank you very much for the kind uh, introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Getu Tadela uh, from Digital Health Research and Development Center, Makala University. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Miriam uh, and her team for inviting us to participate in this training. Uh, please, Christine, next page. Yeah, uh, since March 11th, we have been actively involved in discussions with Professor Miriam uh, to create clear understanding about GoFair and the overall uh, goals of the Vodan uh, training. Professor Miriam uh, gave Magala University the mandate to mobilize other participants from other universities in Ethiopia. I um, contacted several universities and only Addis Ababa University accepted the invitation. And uh, now we have total uh, six uh, uh, data stewards. And uh, we had also discussions with the Tigray Regional Bureau of Health and they were uh, convinced to endorse the Vodan in Africa training and they promised us to provide any sort of assistance. Uh, our, my colleagues uh, from Addis Ababa universities are now trying to get endorsement from the Federal Minister of Health. I hope they will understand and they will uh, endorse the Vodan in Africa, considering the impact fair data could bring to the healthcare system in our country and uh, uh, Africa at large. Next page, please. Yeah, you can, uh, yeah, three times. One more. Yeah, thank you. Country context. Uh, so in Ethiopia, the current health information systems uh, are uh, disparate systems with no interoperability and reusability uh, uh, capabilities, and there are duplication of efforts. So the Federal Minister of Health uh, come up with a solution to with the uh, Ethiopian national uh, health architecture, which supports the information roadmap goals of the country. This information roadmap is objectives uh, are very similar with fair uh, principles, which are intended uh, to maximize the availability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability and quality of uh, data for uh, uh, improving the decision making. And the Ethiopia is currently fighting COVID-19 like other countries in the, in the world. And if you want to the current uh, update, you can uh, use the link over, over there and uh, try to update. Uh, Christine, please, next page. So uh, this is the future state of Ethiopian e-health architecture. So as you can see, there are uh, on the legend, there are <coughs> different systems. The gray uh, indicates that uh, systems uh, not yet developed. I, I mean, they are not yet started developing. Uh, this is a conceptual uh, uh, e-health architecture and uh, green ones are under development, uh, blue ones are functional uh, applications. So I want to focus on the below one, the lower one, which is point of service health information systems. These systems are uh, installed in uh, hospitals. Uh, in our case, we have AMR in our hospital, so we are planning to uh, verify the data, patient-related uh, data uh, in our hospital. And after we verify this, we will go further and verify other systems as well. Uh, next, next page, please. Uh, 
apologies. No. I'm just uh, putting it back, putting it back up. Okay, here we go. Okay. So the challenge we encounter, uh, as it is uh, described by uh, Mariam, uh, it's in Ethiopia there is poor internet infrastructure. This is one challenge, and the other is all systems, health information systems, uh, are legacy systems and they are monolithic. It's hard to extend new systems to those systems. This will be also another challenge. And we have few IT professionals who, who are going to help us with the uh, verification process. And there is a lack of cooperation among domain experts and, and IT professionals. Next page, please. Uh, so the lessons we have learned so far are, we have learned uh, so many things about FAIR principles and their ideology. And we have learned about the FAIR data point installation. We, we already installed the FAIR data points for locally, actually. So we are practicing it uh, so far. Uh, and uh, reading all the documents shared so far, we have grasped the, the importance of semantic web technology and its importance compared to its importance compared to the traditional web technology. Next. Thank you very much. If there is time, uh, my colleague Wondumu will uh, give a, a highlight uh, on COVID-19. Oh, sure. Yes, please. We'll just, um, we'll stay on, we can stay on the last slide and um, please uh, uh, have them uh, speak. Yeah. Uh, Wondemu, you can. Uh, Hello. Hello. Hello, Wondemu. It is, uh, you okay. are Hi. Wondemu. Hi, how are you? We are very fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I would like to say good morning. Already, uh, we have um, communication in order to uh, uh, we expand uh, face by face. So already we are in communication with, and I, I, I agree with all uh, the presentation that um, the same government is actively uh, respond for the COVID-19 uh, COVID, uh, as uh, other countries did. The primary uh, from starting from the threat by official tax force, which is uh, uh, chaired by Deputy Prime Minister. And the, the, the major um, uh, uh, Demo, can you hear me? The response is uh, so, yes, I'm here. Wondimo, there is a. There is a. Uh, uh, yes. Hello. Wondimo, hi. There is a problem. Hi. There is a problem with the audio. We can't hear you properly. There is a. Um, the audio is oh. hanging. Is there something that, that you can do? Okay, let me try. I don't know. Okay, what about now? It's better. Oh. I think so. Can you try again? Okay, okay. Thank you again. Sorry, my connection was not good. That's why. Okay. Just, um, just to provide information. No. The, the, response, the country is actively, um, you know, uh, taking action of uh, COVID-19. Hello? Yeah, Wondimo, I'm really, really sorry, but even now the connection is not good. So what I propose 
is that we take you on the next webinar. And if there is a problem with the connection, then we will um, uh, record it in advance. And then you can be there, but we can make sure that the audio is, because we can't really understand it, it's hanging. I think that will be better. Christine, what do you think is the best solution? Yes, I was going to recommend the same thing. In, uh, okay. okay. So that we can hear you properly, uh, Wondimo, because we need to hear what you uh, wanted to present. So we'll just um, uh, look what the problem is, and then for next webinar, we'll make sure that you can uh, present that is all right. Okay. okay. All right. Sorry for that. So um, then we go from uh, Ethiopia all the way to the other side in the north uh, of the African continent to uh, Tunisia, to the uh, University de Sousse. Um, and uh, we give the floor to Morgan Wirtz uh, and her team. Um, Morgan is a university, uh, is, is a student from uh, Tilburg University who is hosted by uh, the University de Sousse where she is working with uh, the team there uh, to work on uh, COVID, especially among uh, vulnerable uh, populations, especially uh, refugees. Uh, Morgan, it's a pleasure to give you the floor. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really sorry, but I'm not sure that you can hear me because my connection is also quite poor. So if you don't hear me, don't hesitate to say that to me. We can hear you. Uh, so I want to start by uh, thanking all of you for being there and for, for organizing this uh, meeting, which is for me really important. So as an introduction, if you go to the next slide, uh, so the University of SUS uh, started to join Vodan in the end of April. So we are really at the beginning of um, uh, implementing Vodan. We are uh, at the step of legalizing and implementing the partnership. Uh, so personally, uh, I am researching the incidence of COVID-19 and, and movements among migrants, refugees and asylum seekers in the central Mediterranean region. And our objective is um, is to link the data collected in this research with the Vodan network, and maybe in a second time to generalize uh, the data to all the Tunisian population. So if we uh, follow the the step that uh, Miriam established uh, for um, how to establish a solid network of trust and purpose. We are in the step two. We are still in uh, Tunisia at the step of identifying training of trainer hubs. So if we go to the next slide, please. Um, so Tunisia has uh, today so the, the numbers have changed. We have 1,025 confirmed cases, 591 cured people, and 43 dead people. It is uh, not that much compared to uh, the population of the country, which is um, 11 and a half million of citizens. Uh, so we were in lockdown from the 20 March to the 4 May 2020, and now we are uh, step by step uh, getting out of the lockdown. Um, so in uh, Nigeria, the, the coronavirus crisis has had more an economical impact. Uh, a lot of people are working in the informal sector or perceiving daily income and the lockdown cut them from their income. So vulnerable people became more vulnerable. And this is uh, especially the case of refugees, migrants and asylum seekers with which I'm going to work. 
uh, there were still a very strong civil society who gave a lot of donations and who helped a lot of people who was really active and who is still really active. Uh, so this is the context. If we go to the next slide, uh, so the highlights, so as I said before, in the end of April, the University of SUS joined Voden. Uh, this is mainly thanks to Professor Hassan Boubakri that I would like to thank here. He is Professor of Geography and Migration Studies at the university, and he could introduce uh, Vodan to the university who joined it. Um, so now, uh, when I was writing the slide, I was still actively looking for a data steward from the University of SUS. Uh, but now I'm really happy that uh, we have found one, and uh, it is Dr. Uh, Mariam Gardalou. Uh, so she uh, has a really strong CV, and uh, we are really happy to have her with us to help us to manage our data. She might also need the help of um, uh, data scientists from Voden. So we are really happy that to, to meet all of you, to be able to work together, and we will also look for a data scientist at the University de Sousse. So the steps that we are going to follow after is first of all to contact NGOs to see um, if they agree to link their data to Voden, and after to contact the hospital. So we have been thinking about the Hospital Universitaire Saoul, which is uh, the um, hospital linked to the Université de Sousse. Um, and we have also been thinking of the Hospital Abderrahman Mami, which is uh, an hospital who is now only receiving people affected by COVID-19. So another highlight for me was really this meeting because I think it is really important that we get to know all of us that we get to know where the other countries are and uh, and where we are going. So if we go to the next slide, the, the challenges that uh, we have uncourted was, uh, first of all, personally, I am a researcher and a journalist, a freelance journalist. So I have a very little knowledge of uh, how to manage data, uh, very little knowledge in um, um, informatics. So uh, it was quite hard at the beginning to get to know what is data management, what are the issues related to it, why is it important to have fair data, and how to make fair data. Thanks to uh, the training and the webinars, it is uh, something that uh, I think all of us are getting more and more accumulated to it. Uh, and one challenge that I encountered at the beginning was to find the team to support the project in Tunisia. But I think that now we are in a really good move to uh, set up the project. Um, and if we go to the next slide, it's about the lesson learned. Um, so, of course, as I was saying, thanks to the seminars, we are learning what are fair data is, or what are um, fair data bonds, what is it utility, why is it important, and we are also learning uh, about partner partnership, because I think that uh, we are a lot of people from different backgrounds, and I'm really impressed by how fast we could implement Vodan to answer to the pandemic. So thank you to all of you. Thank you, Morgan, for a very clear um, presentation and welcome to Maryam and uh, Hassan, uh, who I've, se I've seen are also uh, on this uh, webinar. Very warm welcome to you and we look forward to working with you. And um, I'd like to emphasize what uh, you're saying, Morgan, is that one of the strengths, I think, of the Vodan Africa Network is that we are there with so much uh, diversity. Because um, even if the focus is very clear on data interoperability, that can only be achieved if that 
um, is understood from uh, a, a framework where from different um, responsibilities uh, we discuss what uh, that means and that is why it is important that um, uh, researchers and academics of different fields are within the network because the technical solution can only work if it is carried out within uh, an understanding of the, the social context in which that uh, uh, technical solution is being uh, shaped. So I hope that uh, also in these webinars we'll continue to have uh, conversations across the different disciplines that are represented here in Vodan Africa with a purpose and with a purpose that from all the different entry points we uh, discuss uh, the best way forward and you also hear it when Eric uh, from the training perspective is um, setting out all the different questions that need to be answered then some of them are technical but many of them uh, are actually uh, that we explain to ourselves the framework in which we uh, think that uh, interoperable uh, data uh, should uh, function. So thank you for bringing that out uh, and for getting uh, up to speed on a, a riding train very fast, uh, Morgan. And uh, then I welcome the last uh, country team for now, uh, which is the team from uh, Kenya, which is led by Dr. Reginald from Tangaza University College, uh, Reginald. It's a pleasure to uh, give you the floor. Team, do you want to make sure that you're unmuted, uh, Reginald? Okay. I'm, I'm there, there we go. Perfect. Yes. So thank you very much, uh, the team that has put this initiative together, led by Professor Miriam from Professor Francesca, the communication done by Ivy, and now the slide presentation by Christine. Thank you very much. So in Kenya, we are working in two teams. One is led by Moi University, and Professor Some will have a chance to say a few words in the last five minutes. And in Nairobi, uh, from Tangaza, we are helping to coordinate the three regions in Nairobi. We call them Nairobi sub-counties. That is Westlands, Kamkunji, and the area we call uh, Kibra or Langata. So in these regions, that's why we think there's going to be a big catchment of persons who are infected by COVID virus. And so we are hoping that through the initiatives of the local health centers, we can build a very strong network. So what has happened so far is that uh, we are still building up the structure to reach the Kenya government. And we are hoping that uh, from next week, we are able to reach the Minister of Health to give us the full uh, permission, uh, permit to do this work. So far, I'm very happy with the regional di directors of the health centers in Nairobi, Westlands, Kamkunji, and Kibra area. So uh, the population of Kenya is 48 million, according to the tw 2019 census. And then on the 2nd of March this year, the Kenya government announced uh, the lockdown because of two persons uh, being tested positive. And then two weeks later, the G Kenya government again announced the closure of the schools and universities. And this is where we are now. Next slide. Yes, so by the 5th of May, when I did this slide, uh, now we, we had uh, tested over 25,000 persons, 535. Today we are now at 607. We had 24 deaths and 182 recovered. And uh, the map of Kenya, you can see the really epicenter is Nairobi, the capital city, and then the coastal region of Mombasa. Next slide. So some of the highlights, because we are still building on our network and understanding is um, how to relate the fair data points with the, what's happening on the ground. And hearing from the regional directors, those who are working in the mail centers, 
What I'm beginning to see is uh, the awareness the government has built in those regions where everyone is knowing something about the pandemic, where water tanks have been placed in different places within the city at bus stops when you're renting the vehicle, washing your hands, carrying gel. Hospitals have been made aware of what is going to happen just in case the number should stop. And this is in Nairobi, Mombasa, and the other big towns. Next slide. So um, the challenges encountered, yes, we are still working to see how we work closely with the government, but at the local level is the issue of movement. Because in the informal settlements where we are concentrating our research, very many people rely on small businesses. And so the transport movement across the region is very important that has been affected. And then uh, when talking to different persons in this region where the slum dwellers are, you realize that people have to walk long distance because of the curfew. Some of them take two hours to reach their destination. And we are trying to relate this and see how do we capture this with the fair data points. Next slide. And so it's too early to say what's happening in Kenya. We cannot say that we are safe because every day the numbers are growing. And so we have to be really prepared. And uh, what we're trying to do with the medical directors in the sub counties is make sure that uh, we are working closely with the small hospitals or dispensaries within this region so that uh, persons who are most likely to be infected are well taken care of and that they can recover very easily. So I just took one of the sub county that is Kamkunji where we are really concentrating our efforts. And as from this night, the government has done a lockdown in this area, nobody's moving out because the, the number of infection is growing this area has uh, 270 persons, 1,000 subpersons. Uh, 49.9 percent are female, 50.1 percent are male, and then the number of youth who are really mostly affected because of this lockdown, uh, almost 7 percent above 18, and then this is where we think that if we don't do anything to contain the virus, we can easily leave the youth uh, vulnerable and some of them might uh, go back to the petty crime they have been used to doing. And in this region also what we realize that girls are facing a lot of violence because of the lockdown. So the psychological, physical and social violence. Drunkenness is growing, domestic violence is growing. And so putting all this together, we are trying to map out and see how do we capture these in the fair data points. Next. And I think at this juncture, I would like to invite Professor Some so that he can also say a few words and Christine, we shall finish from there. Oh, yes, please go ahead. Professor Some. Maybe um, uh, I, I, I can thank you first, Reginald, and uh, then introduce Professor Some. I think your presentation uh, was very important. Um, also pointing to the different um, ways in which um, the COVID uh, pandemic uh, causes challenges. And therefore we also, as you are saying, really need to think what are the kind of the data that we need to capture if we want to uh, understand it. So this is something that we'll be discussing more also in the training, but it is very good that you brought it out. And, and also thank you for uh, always highlighting uh, these things in relation to the reality as it shows itself on the on the ground. It's really very much appreciated, uh, Dr. Reginald. And um, having uh, said that, it's a great pleasure to uh, introduce to you uh, Professor Somme from uh, uh, the University of uh, Kenyatta. Moi. Uh, moi, moi. Moi. Sorry, uh, Professor Somme. Uh, Moy University and Moy University will be joining us uh, uh, with the fair data point. It's um, only natural that I was forgetting that because we have known you from so many uh, universities in uh, Kenya and we always meet you everywhere, um, Professor Somme. 
um, you were on the team that visited uh, the Netherlands uh, when you did um, uh, over the summer, last summer, and which gave you a chance to um, look at FAIR. And it's a really very great pleasure that you have uh, joined us, uh, not only to give leadership in Kenya, but also to guide us in terms of uh, uh, important uh, um, initiatives that are already taking place on the continent and that uh, we should uh, be connected to. So it's an honor to give you the floor, Professor. Thank you very much, uh, Mariam. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's my pleasure really to join Bodan. Uh, first and foremost, it was my privilege to be in Leiden when we were launching the CoFair uh, Africa Network, and um, it was full of promise. Now we are beginning to see when the, we say in engineering, I'm an engineer, when the tire meets the, the road, this is now where we were launching. Uh, I am at Eldred, and I am with more University. Uh, the Department of Medical Informatics. And since we were in Leiden, I have been able to participate in looking at the harmonization of a master's program in health informatics in five East African countries, Ethiopia, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, and Kenya. Um, these were like nine universities that have a master's in health informatics. And I think the biggest challenge in doing a master's in health informatics has always been the entrance into the program, whether they have an ICT background or whether they have a medical background and what kind of curriculum should they be covering. But having said that, um, the Department of Medical Informatics at Moy University will be a, um, a core data uh, focal point and um, we will be able to introduce Professor Han Mwangi, who is the head of this department, who will be the person uh, doing the representation. But I would like just to add on what um, my colleague has said. Nairobi is uh, county number 47 in Kenya. We have 47 counties. And I think more University will be representing quite a number of what is happening in the counties that are outside Nairobi. Let me stop at that and say it's my privilege and pleasure to be able to join the important Thank you, Professor Somme. So, um, Christine, I think that um, we can open the floor for some uh, questions and answers, and then we'll close, um, we'll give uh, for the closure the floor to the Honorable Minister, and then the VC will close uh, this uh, session today. I'll uh, hand over to you, Christine, for Q&A. Yes, yeah, so, um, so while people are, are, are thinking of questions, or which you can, um, in a moment, unmute yourself and ask or type into the chat, I did want to uh, call your attention to that we will do this uh, two more times. So please think about uh, next Thursday at uh, 7 p.m. Uh, EAT time, or if you're in Central Europe, that'd be 6 p.m. Uh, think about joining us for an hour or 90 minutes. Uh, next week, we are going to take a deep dive on Ethiopia and Kenya. And um, the, uh, the week after, we also have something exciting planned. If you want to read more about Bodan, or you happen to be a country that is not yet participating, this is a link where you can go read more about it. Of course, I hope you will also contact Miriam and Francesca. Uh, and then, of course, here's a reminder to where the Vodan um, Africa website is. And we will have uh, slides and recordings posted shortly. We have a wonderful master's student, of Miriam's, who takes the recordings and makes sure that they um, uh, are low bandwidth. So they work on mobile and are very accessible for all. Uh, a couple, a couple last thoughts while people are, are thinking about things they might want to ask. I just uh, want to thank all of the speakers and the tremendous work of Ravelworks Africa who put this uh, webinar together and all of the coordination. Um, and of course, this, this wonderful idea conceived by all these partners in the leadership of uh, Francesca and Miriam. I think we had a, a many, many wonderful quotes from this presentation. I, um, call your attention back to the VC of KIU, uh, Dr. Mohammed, when he said this is a very big jackfruit. I think it is. Uh, I also really enjoyed Dr. Sakhanat when she mentioned, uh, you know, on the positive side, 
how would I have met all of these people without COVID? And so hopefully there will be some, some good things along with our network of fair data points that comes out of this. We also heard, heard from several countries that internet and reliable electricity and even access to IT people uh, were challenges. And we thank Kenya um, and Dr. Reginald for reminding us of the human cost, um, you know, not just from the virus, but from the effects of lockdowns. And I uh, applaud you for um, wanting to include social science data in your endpoint. So with that, if um, there are any questions or if people had questions of clarification, uh, please ask now. Again, you can also type into the chat. You know, it can be, uh, sometimes people feel a little bit shy when there are 50 people <laughs> and uh, we have uh, internet that is coming and going. Um, so know that we have a very active Slack channel uh, and a very active uh, WhatsApp group too, if you're part of Vodan Africa. And it's a wonderful way to stay in touch with your colleagues and to ask qu quick questions and get answers back. It's been a wonderful support network, I think, for all that are involved. Uh, and so, of course, this is our time together um, in real time, but we um, are also available in other ways. Well, let, let's go ahead and have um, some last thoughts. And uh, I, will, I will turn the floor over to um, Miriam and Francesca. Yeah, thank you, uh, Christine. And um, thank you for actually a very nice uh, summary that you did. Uh, Francesca, before we go to the closing of this uh, webinar, um, would you like uh, to take uh, the floor for some final uh, remarks? Yes. Uh, thank you, Professor Miriam, and thank you, Christine, for having us. Uh, we'd just like to thank everybody, the Honorable Minister, the, who has been of a lot of support. The, one of the very first things she did was to issue a public statement uh, giving our support to Bodan Africa and recognizing the role of women. She actually said that Bodan Africa is one way of women leading other women and other people in uh, making the society better at the time of a crisis. So I would like to thank her. Uh, the Vice Chancellor of KIU as well, thank you for your support, sir, and uh, every other person here. We have made a lot of achievements, but one of the things that we have done that I think I should mention is the fact that in the light of this COVID-19, uh, we had the first uh, machine for machine metadata uh, workshop for COVID-19. I mean, imagine that is an amazing thing out of Africa. The entire world is so busy concentrating on vaccines and getting more doctors and PPEs and testing, but Africa, we have actually we're thinking ahead, okay, fine, this is eventually gonna leave. What lessons can we learn? Where can we preserve the data? Most of the outbreaks that have happened in the past, we virtually couldn't find data on most of them now, but at least with this initiative. So it's actually a great thing out of Africa and we all should be proud to be part of this initiative. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for uh, Francesca. It's Really, we're really lucky to have such a good and inspirational leader. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to uh, now uh, give the floor to uh, Honorable Minister for some final remarks. Honorable. And actually, while, while he is um, unmuting, um, uh, we did have a quick question from uh, Taya Esther, if she would like to ask, and then we will, we will have our close out. Um, yes, we can hear you. My question, my question was for um, Professor Somme, and um, because it took a while to see my hand up, I asked him in a private message if um, more university has already started the MSc in Health Informatics, and he says that they have. I still have a further question on that. He also talked about um, other universities in East Africa um, doing the MSc in health informatics. So my question is, has, is it supposed to be like one syllabus across East Africa for MSc or what's the plan on that? Uh, let me respond uh, there. 
the harmonization of programs is an issue that normally is taken up by our inter-university council for East Africa, which sits in Kampala. Mm -hmm. The process is just to see how many programs are there in the ICD domain and how many programs are there in the medical domain and to see which programs have more of one another and to discuss as experts in this field what makes the minimum that should be acceptable for this program. So harmonization of programs is not to make it uniform or anything, it's just to make sure that each program in each of the nine universities have the minimum information they require in the ICD domain and also in the medical data domain. I hope that- Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Thea. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, thanks a lot. Let me uh, see if uh, Julia can take the floor. Are you there, Julia? I think she's just muted. Can you unmute? Uh... Ivy, can you unmute her as well? Yes. Okay, she's on now. Yes. Okay. Let me say a big thank you to the professors, all of you, for this uh, wonderful platform. And it's often said that if you don't tell your story, someone will tell it for you. And so to see all of the different African countries on board telling their own story as it relates to COVID-19. Uh, Professor Mariam has always been a big friend and a big supporter of what happens in Africa. So let me say hats off for you. I've been working with her for the past seven, eight years. So I know her love and passion for the people of Africa. I've listened to all of our my friends from the various African countries as it relates to the status of COVID in their country. It's no different in Liberia, uh, but when let, lessons learned from the Ebola virus, uh, we're using some of those methods to, to help curtail the virus. One of our biggest fear is the kids being out of school. Our parents back home are not used to having their kids home with them for 24 hours. So our fear is what will happen to those students. We do not have the technology like the Western world to keep the, the kids learning while they are home. And most of the parents are not educated to, to assist them in, in home studies. So that's gonna be one of our biggest problems after this lockdown. The other issue we see in Liberia is gonna be domestic violence. I think one of the, the previous speakers spoke about that. Domestic violence is a serious, serious problem with not having people go to work or go out uh, because of social distancing. So they are taking advantage of that and abusing their wives or their significant others. Um, the other issue is uh, alcoholism. It's getting on the rise. Um, so these are stuff that while we talk about curtailing COVID-19 now, we should be thinking about what happened after. How do we address the psychosocial issues that would develop from COVID-19? But I think with the data collected at all, the next time I'm on this platform, I will give you the actual stats as to what is happening in Liberia. Um, I'm locked down in Nevada. I came for a funeral and got stuck with all the airports being closed. So I'm away from home, but I'm in contact with what's happening home thanks to the social media and all of the different networks. But um, I just want to say again, uh, I'm glad to be a part of this. And I think this is the way forward. When you are well informed, you can, you can direct the way forward as to how to curtail uh, not just COVID-19, but anything after. For me, it's the after COVID-19. Like you is doing extremely well in curtailing it. I think so far we have had 20 deaths, uh, but it can be a, a lot better. So thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you for, for Professor Francine and others, Chris, um, for the work you do. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Minister. And thank you for um, giving us uh, the encouragement to um, uh, move forward and to really uh, look at uh, the challenges even beyond uh, when uh, COVID is uh, over, um, as we're going to deal with the aftermath uh, of, uh, of all this. Um, with that, um, I would like to ask uh, Christine, uh, before I uh, give the floor to the VC to uh, close, 
I wanted to uh, see if you had some final remarks and also again uh, really thank you for uh, hosting us it's really very much appreciated oh sure it is my pleasure I always say host a meeting that you would like to attend and I was so excited as this came about I I wouldn't have wanted to be anywhere else but on on this webinar learning from all of you and I I really can't imagine um, uh, saying anything more eloquent than uh, was, was just said uh, by my esteemed colleague uh, from Liberia. We do have one last question um, from Rogers uh, Wanamaba. Sorry, I know I just uh, butchered that horribly. Um, but please, Rogers, if, if you would like to ask your question or I can speak it for you. Let me go ahead and um, say the question. So um, uh, he asks and says, thank you for the great presentation. He is wondering um, how we are going to work with the people that do not visit hospitals and that do not maintain regular medical visits. And this is very common in Uganda. So I don't, I don't know if, that, if um, uh, Miriam wants to answer that or if any of the other speakers would like, I'm sure that is a problem um, across the continent and actually also here in America. So that's an open uh, question for any of the presenters. Um, I'm uh, wondering if uh, Professor Francesca would like to take that question. Okay. Yes. So for those who do not visit hospitals and do not maintain regular medical visits, yes, first in the light of this uh, project, yes, we are concentrating on the case reporting forms, which is on the WHO standard, where we build the fair data point. And then we're having the metadata based on also the hospital system. So I guess it's part of what we have to consider moving forward on uh, how do we now get health data on those who, uh, who don't visit hospitals? What alternative forms, what are that alternative sources of data do we now have to look out for about those people? Not just about the COVID-19, any case of COVID-19 definitely will have to get to the government. But then beyond COVID-19, those who probably self-medicate or who go to some other traditional homes, we're going to have to figure out how to extra, how to get their data and then build the metadata and point it to the fair data point for them. Thank you, Francesca. Very clear answer. So um, with that, um, thank you everybody for the questions. Looking forward to the next uh, webinar. And I am uh, handing over to the VC uh, who has given us so much time and so much support to close this meeting. So the floor is yours. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Miriam. And uh, the webinar appreciates even from our colleagues from Tunisia, you know, and uh, we thank uh, the team for trying to work with us. Our Listening to the presentation in French or Arabic, it all reports, you know, the East Coast where our, our Kenyan brothers and sisters also made a very good presentation. Uh, and I think, whereas the implementation of GoFair uh, network, Africa network, was done prior to the outbreak of COVID 19, it was really like a blessing, you know, in advance. And, and our preparedness. And so, here is an opportunity for us to uh, apply a very, very fundamental issue of the existential nature of, of people. You know, health is at stake, uh, lives are also at stake. And I really want to appreciate all members from Kampala International University who have been able to attend from their partners you know, 
know Philips and others. So we, we really appreciate Professor Mito, thank you for organizing this webinar. So we remain in touch, and I, I want to encourage members to participate in the other webinars. Uh, there's a lot much more to learn. I'm sure out of this we'll be able to uh, now set foot. I know we are all working with government to ensure that uh, there is acceptability. It may take a while these challenges most of the challenges raised are uh, common across, you know, the, the networks being implemented. Uh, and that's the nature of, of our landscape in Africa, especially. But even within those, you know, even those are making a turn, you know, way. So the other partners, Field Foundation and the Gulfair Foundation, uh, the technical team, Francisca, and your team, please keep it up and uh, all the best. So that this network is not just like a firefighting approach, but a network that is going to stay uh, beyond COVID-19. And I wish you a very nice evening from wherever you are. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, with this, uh, I would like to end uh, the webinar. Thank everybody and have a very good night, evening, afternoon, morning, Christine, and I uh, hope to see all of you next week. Thanks again. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-b